Okay, welcome back. Um, this is Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm going to be answering this question in this video, question number nine from an old, old paper from January 2006 um, from the C1 at Excel paper, GCE paper. And this question is a question that I gave to some of my students, um, practice some past papers and gave them this old paper here. And one of the students has requested me to answer question 9, part D. But um, I will, for completeness sake, answer the whole of the question from the beginning till the end. So we'll start off with 9A. It says, figure 2 shows, shows part of the curve C, which has an equation y equals x minus 1 and times x squared minus 4. It tells us that the curve cuts the x-axis at the points P and 1, 0 and Q. So we know this point is 1, 0. We don't know the coordinates of P and Q. It's not given to us as, you know, explicitly in the question. But then it tells us um, to write down the x-coordinate of P and the x-coordinate of Q. All right. So this one is a pretty simple one. It's only worth two marks. It says write down. It's something you can do almost visually by looking at the equation. We know that the curve crosses the x-axis. Uh, when y equals 0, because the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. So everywhere on the x-axis, y equals 0. So if I just take this equation and equate it to 0, I'll have x minus 1 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So we know that on the x-axis, y is 0. So we can just solve this equation. We already know one of the solutions is when x minus 1 is 0, which is x equals 1. That's the one that's given to us. And this will generate the other two. So when x squared minus 4 equals 0, x squared equals 4. So you take the square root. Don't forget the positive and negative square root of both sides. You get plus or minus 2. So that means the one that's on the positive side, which is your q, is 2. And p is going to be negative 2 for the x values. And it only tells us to put the x coordinate of p. It's not saying coordinates. That means I don't have to write it in coordinate form. I could say at p x is equal to negative 2. Okay, p was that one, yes. And q is the one where x is equal to positive 2. And there we have the two marks for that question. Um, you could have almost done that visually, seeing that that will have those two solutions, 2 and minus 2. Then part b says, show that dy dx is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now dy dx is the gradient function which is found by differentiating the original function. And the original function is y equals y equals x minus 1 times x squared minus 4. Now for us to differentiate this, we have to prepare it to be differentiated by expressing these as separate terms by expanding this bracket. So we have y equals x times x squared, which is x cubed, x times minus 4, which is minus 4x, minus 1 times x squared, which is minus x squared, and minus 1 times minus 4, which is plus 4. Now, what we have to do here is differentiate this. In order to differentiate it, what I would like to do first is just to make it a bit neater, write it in order. So x cubed and then the x squared term and then the x term and then the constant. It's just uh, you don't have to do that. It just makes it a bit neater. So if you differentiate this, dy dx is going to be when you multiply by the power and you take one from the power. So 3 times 1 will be 3x, and then you reduce the power by 1 to the power of 2. Minus, you're going to have 2x. Minus drop down there a bit. 3x squared minus 2x, and then for minus 4x, when you differentiate that, you get minus 4. The x is dropped because actually, originally, it's x to the power of 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Take 1 from the power becomes x to the power of 0. And the constant is also, is well basically completely dropped because the, the x term there is actually x to the power of 0 if you think about it. Okay, that will give you 4 because x to the power of 0 is 1. So when you multiply by the power, the whole thing just becomes 0. So this 4 is not going to be there. It's gone. Okay, so there we have the answer to um, part B. Just show that the gradient function dy dx is 3x squared minus 2x minus 4. And we've shown that. Okay, so now we're going to go to part C. 
Okay, part C tells us that uh, we have to show that x y equals x plus 7 is an equation of the tangent to C at the point of minus 1, 6. Okay, so now, I have prepared this little line here from before. Now, this is a tangent to the curve, okay, at a particular point. At this particular point, it's going to touch the curve and not pass through it. And that's roughly the tangent at the point when x equals minus 1. It's just a rough kind of, you know, it's just a sketch here. So minus 1, 6 would be somewhere over here maybe. And that is the tangent to the curve at that point. At that point, minus 1, 6. And we've got to show that the tangent of the curve has the equation y equals x plus 7. Now, so in order to show that the equation of the tangent is y equals x plus 7, we need to have two pieces of information. We know that a tangent to a curve has the same gradient of the curve at the point where it touches the curve. We know the tangent to the curve is a straight line. All right, so I need two pieces of information to find the gradient of a straight line. One is I need to find the gradient of that line. Okay, the gradient of that line, which would be the same as the gradient of the tangent at when x equals minus 1. And the second thing I need to know is a particular point on the line. Any point on the line will help me find the equation of the line as long as I know the gradient as well. And we know very well that the point is minus 1, 6 because tangent passes through that point. So all we need to do is find the gradient and then use that and this point to find the equation of that straight line. Now, the, uh, the gradient of the curve at that point when x equals minus 1 will be given by its gradient function. Okay, so we know that this dy dx tells us the gradient of the curve at any point. So we, we can see when x is equal to minus 1, then the gradient dy dx, the gradient function will give us 3 times minus 1 squared, take away 2 times minus 1, take away 4. So that gives you 3 times 1, which is 3, negative 2 times negative 1, which is plus 2 and minus 4 so we can say that the the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the point when x equals minus 1 is going to be 5 minus 4 which is 1 so we know it passes through the point negative 1 and 6 and the gradient of the tangent is equal to 1 so that's enough information now to find the equation of the the line the equation of the tangent so we can use I mean I like to use this formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 could always also use y equals mx plus c it's perfectly fine whichever one you prefer now you can say y minus the y value which is 6 equals m which is gradient 1 times x minus minus 1 so x minus minus 1 be careful about that you know minus minus is going to be plus so you have y minus 6 is equal to this will be x plus 7 x plus 1 sorry jumping the gun there x plus 1 because you have minus and minus gives you plus and then if you add 6 to both sides you're left with y equals x plus 7 and there we have the equation of the tangent at the point when x equals minus 1 and we've see, shown that it is equal to or the equation is y equals x plus 7 so that's that question sorted okay then part d which is the question that the student actually asked it says the tangent to C at the point R is parallel to the tangent at the point minus 1, 6. Find the exact coordinates of R. So there's another place on this curve where the gradient is the same as the gradient of this curve. Okay, so let's, the gradient of this curve at that point. Okay, so there's another point where the gradient is exactly the same as that. And if you just, just continue this down, you can see that point is going to be somewhere over here down here so we have to find this by calculation um, not just visually so it's somewhere over here this is going to be the point where the gradient of the curve is the same as the gradient at the point minus one six and this point they've told us to name it r okay so this point is a name r is named r so the gradient at this point is exactly the same as the gradient of that point on the curve and that's what we're going to use to solve this problem because i know that this is the gradient function and it tells us the gradient of the curve at any particular point that we want. So we want to find the points where the gradient is equal to 1. And we already know one of those points. This will be another point. So to, make, to find where the gradient is equal to 1, so we know that the gradient 
at r is equal to 1. What is 1? The gradient at r is 1 because it has the same gradient at, as the point minus 1, 6. So we can say that the gradient function has to equal 1. So 3x squared minus 2x minus 4 has to equal 1. If we solve this equation, we've got 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. Now I could solve this equation by factorizing okay, and finding the two factors. You could use the window method, you could use splitting the middle term. Um, those two methods, you know, you could use command, you know, commando method. Just go and just, just go ahead and straight do it. But we can use a bit of intelligence here because we know that when x equals minus one, this solution, this great, this will be, um, you know, satisfying this equation because we know the gradient is equal to one at two places. One is when x is minus one, and the other one is at r. So if x equals minus one is a solution to this. Uh, to this particular equation that means x plus 1 equals 0 would have been before this and x plus 1 is one of the factors so we can now very quickly work out what the other factor is going to be the other factor is going to be okay what you have to multiply x plus 1 by to give you 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 well there has to be a 3x here otherwise this won't become 3x squared and that has to be a negative because plus times minus is minus, and that must be a 5. And we can check by expanding x times 3x is 3x squared, x times minus 5 is minus 5, x minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x, that's right, and 1 times minus 5 is minus 5. So no need to factorize when you already know one of the factors, basically. You can just say that's one of the factors, and the other one, you can very quickly deduce what those numbers must be. So we say that the solution that we're looking for this x plus 1 equals 0 will give us x minus 1. So we know that solution already. That's one of the points where the gradient is 1. And we, we already know that from the previous parts of the question. What we're interested in is the other point. That's the point r. So when 3x minus 5 equals 0, that means 3x equals 5 and x equals 5 over 3. So that is the x coordinates of the point r. So the point r has x coordinate 5 over 3. Now, it's asking us to find the coordinates, the exact coordinates of R. So exact means in exact form. So I wouldn't write this as, for example, uh, you know, 1.6667, whatever, 1.667, or 1. Point, you would write it in exact form as an exact fraction like this. Okay, you wouldn't round it to a de any decimal places. That's what it means by exact form. And then we need to find um, the y-coordinate of the point R. So to find the y-coordinate of the point R, we can use the other equation we were given, which is the equation of the actual curve. So we know that at when x equals 5 over 3, this is the point where the gradient is going to be equal to 1, the other point on the curve. So we need to find the y-coordinate of that point. So we can substitute 5 over 3 into the original equation, so y equals 5 over 3 minus 1, and you've got 5 over 3 squared minus 4. So this gives you 5 over 3 minus 3 over 3, which is 2 thirds. Okay, 5 over 3 minus uh, 3 over 3, that's right, times, this is going to be 25 divided by 9 minus 4. 4 is like 36 over 9. Okay, so you end up with... Uh, this equals y equals that's two thirds times that's going to be negative 11 over 9 so you end up with that gives you minus 22 over 27 so that's the y coordinate negative 22 over 27 so those are the points well that is the point r okay let's see if it looks 5 over 3 is more than 1 okay and it's negative 22 over 2, that makes sense. Okay, so we can see that those are the coordinates, the exact coordinates of R, not written in decimal form, written in exact form, unrounded. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number 9. I hope that was clear. So we, we can find, the, there's two points which share the same gradient on this curve. One of them we know, the other one we have to find. How do we find it? We equate the gradient function to what its gradient is going to be at that point, which is 1. And then we solve that equation 
and we find two values of x. One is the value we already know from the first part of the question, and this is the value that we had to find. That must be the x coordinate of r, and then we found the y coordinate of r by substituting that back into the original equation, and now we've got the x and y coordinate of the point r. And there we have that question completed. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you understood. I'm going to be putting other questions from this paper if I'm asked in um, the playlist that should appear over here. Other questions from this topic, which is to do with differentiation, I guess, will be in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel from this uh, icon in the middle here, and I will put some P1, um, kind of P1, because now C1 has become P1, some P1 kind of... Uh, you know, material on the card at the top. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.